Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Amps and Octane's Tool Reviews. I'm your host, Mo. So it's just about time for another project. We're gonna be working on the BMW M5, but we're not gonna be using these old trusty guys, the old roll them down the floor jack and the old jack stands and crawling around on the ground. We're modernizing into something so much better and I can't wait to show you guys. So I've gone ahead and bought a set of, you guessed it, quick jacks. These are the model 5000 TLX, meaning they're rated at 5,000 pounds. The TLX means extended frame length. So these are six inches longer than the regular TL model. Um, the reason I had to do that is because the M5, these, uh, these factory lift points on the bottom of the car are too far apart for the regular model. So I'll show you guys that when we get that far. But um, one more thing I wanted to mention before we get to the unboxing is uh, I've purchased a set of wireless um, microphones. So there's a, little, uh, there's a little square on me you can see right now. So we've got a little wireless mic. So please let me know how the audio quality is. Hopefully it's better, not worse, but um, it should be considerably better. But let me know. I can try wearing it on the outside of the shirt instead of the inside if it makes funny noises or you can hear my heartbeat or who knows. I, I don't know. Just let me know. So without further ado, I'm going to rip into these boxes. We'll get all this splayed out and uh, we'll take a look at what we got. Hey guys, just wanted to show you how nicely these came packaged. They were uh, strapped top and bottom with plywood and uh, nice form-fitted uh, styrofoam over the ends and then all strapped. That's some pretty, pretty nice shipping. Comes all on a pallet. So yeah, just wanted to show you that real quick. That's, uh, that's nice to see. Okay guys, so uh, Three different boxes of stuff showed up, plus a few extras because I bought the extended kit with the, uh, the pinch welds and the uh, hangers. So these are the two left and right frames, the main frames for the units. Um, and you can see there's a uh, the hydraulic shock that does all the lifting, as well as a little air assist cylinder for helping to lower the, uh, the jacks when there's no weight on them. So for the last bit of travel, and you've got these safety arms here that'll latch into the uh the rail underneath here there's two positions a mid and a high position where they'll latch um, of course you don't want to use them unless they are latched and we've got all these goodies so this came in the other smaller boxes so we've got this is, this is part of the expansion kit, I'm calling it, <laughs> the upgrade. There's two of these nice uh, heavy duty hangers. They're rubber lined um, and they mount on the wall. They came included with mounting screws and everything, which is nice. And then you get these rubber pinch weld blocks. And uh, these are meant for vehicles that have the, uh, the pinch weld that you would lift on with a block. So there's, there's four of those that came in the kit. Uh, of course, the installation manual printed manual, quite a few pages in there. That's going to be fun. Uh, these are, these are hooks that you can use to hook into the side of the uh, jacks to slide them in and out from under a vehicle. So that might come in pretty handy actually. And they sell you two, or sorry, it comes included with two different uh, blocks, lifting blocks. So there's these uh, lower profile ones and the higher profile ones. It looks like the low profile ones are about a two inch block. And I hope the high profile ones are three. 
And they just basically look like big Lego blocks. And uh, they do actually connect together so they don't slide around if you're going to stack more than one. Then there's two long lines, which I believe go from the power unit to the short lines that attach to the uh, jacks themselves, uh, which are these short lines here. They're like about a two foot line, I guess. And they give you a bunch of quick disconnect fittings and other miscellaneous fittings that we have to connect to the power unit and to the ends of the, uh, the cables here. Sorry, lines. And some thread sealant. So there is a note in their manual about this thread sealant. If you do use the included liquid sealant, you have to let it cure for 24 hours. So that's something to be aware of. If you do plan on using your jack right away, they, uh, they also condone using regular thread sealant tape. So I'm not sure which I'm gonna go with yet, but I do have both available, so we can go with either. And the final piece of the puzzle is the power unit itself. So we've got a motor, a control box, some solenoids and a tank for fluid, um, and then the control pendant. It's just simple up and down buttons. And one thing they don't include in the kit is uh, a uh, either transmission oil or hydraulic oil. So I've went ahead and bought some hydraulic oil. So this is the fluid I chose to use. Uh, it was available locally in my auto parts store. It's hydraulic oil, hydraulic oil ISO 32, which is one of the recommended fluids they recommend in the manual. So that's what I'm going to go with. All right, time to assemble these bad boys. So the uh, first part of the instructions say to grab the 90 degree fittings and Remove the plugs out of the hydraulic cylinders with a six millimeter Allen key and install the ORB side of the 90 with it slightly facing up. So we'll go ahead and do that. So here's the two fittings we're gonna need. So we'll go ahead and take the uh, caps off the uh, ORB side. That's the side with the O-rings. Boy, these caps are really in there. Because these have the O-ring, there's uh, you don't need any thread sealant on these fittings here. Okay, so the instructions don't have any kind of torque rating, just uh, turn them until snug, so. And slightly pointing up, so we're gonna go with something about like that. I forgot them at maybe a 30 degree angle or something like that, we'll try that. Okay, so next it's time to assemble the ends onto the hoses. Um, the manual's got a pretty big section about thread sealant. Um, it looks like it looks like the factory's had some failures from pieces of uh, thread sealant tape getting stuck inside some of the hydraulic components, the valves and such. So they have a cautionary note that you can use thread tape, but you have to install it correctly. So. Don't let it lap over the end of the connections. Keep it a thread or so back. And when you wind it onto the pipe, remember to always go in the same direction that you're gonna tighten your fitting on with because otherwise if you go this way and then put the fitting on this way, it's just gonna unravel and bunch up and that's what bunches it up and gets it inside the pipe. So there's a little instruction on how to do that. 
Um, so this is uh, the thread sealant they recommend due to that very reason, um, which is fine. The only thing is uh, it requires 24 hours dry time, cure time. So we're gonna go ahead and go with the traditional TPFE thread sealing tape instead. And what they want us to do is put the uh, two female ends on the ends of the hoses, of the short hoses. The, um, the female end uh, of the hose connects into the fitting we just put on the uh, cylinders. And then this other end, being a male end, connects to the female quick connects. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some thread sealing tape on the ends of these. And they say two to three rounds is the most you wanna put on. So I've got one Let's go two and a half. There we go. So we've applied it righty tidy. Kept it a thread away from the end. And then we can attach the connector. And it says to go hand tight and then two or three turns. There we go, that's plenty tight. It's one done. Go ahead and do the other one. Okay. That's the two short hoses done. So next we are to route the hoses from that elbow we put on the cylinder underneath the frames and out. So we'll do that. And these JSC fittings are uh, are not needing any sealant either. Just an 11 16 wrench on these and just snug them up. There we go. Okay, next step calls for the uh, putting the ends on the two long hoses. So they take the two female quick disconnects and both ends of the threaded ends on the lines have to be, uh, the hoses have to be done with uh, thread sealant. So we'll prep both ends and then screw the ends on, fittings on rather.
All right, so these are the uh, these are the ends with the female quick disconnect. That's what's going to go on the line on both ends. And that's how it looks when it's completed. So I'll go ahead and do the other one. Number two. Okay, so now we're gonna connect these lines together. So <clears throat> it doesn't matter which way these, uh, these hoses go. Um, they're both the same fitting. So we'll take one cap off and connect it to the short line from the cylinder. And these are, these are quick disconnects, so you can see there's a lock symbol on them right here where that pin is. Uh, when it's in that position, it allows us to move this way. But if you have these in the uh, lock position, so I'm snapped, I'm snapped in now, I can, I can Pull this back because that ball bearing is just going to go into this little slot and it'll let me undo it. If you don't want this coming apart, you just turn this collar and now you can't pull it back to unlock it. Just super handy. I'll show you guys on the power unit when we can get in a little closer. Okay. So we've got both lines connected now. And uh, the next step in the instructions is to pressurize the air cylinder. So they want 40 to 50 PSI in the uh, little side cylinder that contains air on the, on the hydraulic cylinders. So I'm gonna go fire up the compressor, charge it up, and then we'll uh, We'll get a gauge and we'll fill those up to 45 PSI, right in the middle. Okay, so according to the manual, we are apparently supposed to take the caps off the cylinders. And they have a little Schrader removal tool built into the ends of them here. We're supposed to uh, compress the Schrader valve and release any air in the cylinder and any accumulated oil that might be in there. Okay. Well, tiny bit of air came out of there. Not much. And then we are supposed to inflate to 40 to 50 PSI. So I'm going to try to hit the middle. And a couple of guys have had problems with air leaking out of these because the Schrader valves weren't tight, so I'm going to quickly check that. You can just use the end of these caps to insert in and then twist them. That one's tight. One of the maintenance items for these quick jacks is to check the air pressure every once in a while in these things. Don't know exactly how often a guy should, but I'm gonna check mine then. Before every lift for now until I'm confident in them and then just maybe monthly. Ah, oh, that one was a little bit loose actually. Okay, we're charged. Okay, so we have two fittings left. They are these male quick disconnects and they are going to go on the power unit itself. So we'll get these installed. Move the shipping caps. And this is, they suggest starting on the lower one because once you get the upper one on here, it's hard to get into the bottom one. So that makes sense. Yeah, 
and they just need to be snug. There we go. A little bit of looks like automatic transmission fluid in there. Um, the next step actually is to fill this with hydraulic oil and um, they recommend using hydraulic oil, which is clear, or uh, automatic transmission fluid, which is of course red. It looks like they used ATF to uh, test these rigs, but I purchased hydraulic oil myself. So to fill the reservoir, it says, any general purpose ISO 3246, 68 hydraulic fluid, approved automatic transmission fluids, such as Dextron 3, uh, 6, sorry, uh, 5, Mercon 5, Mercon, oh God, I think that's 60, or any, uh, no, that would be 55, I think, any synthetic multi-vehicle automatic transmission fluid, so, Let's go ahead and get a funnel in there. This is the stuff I bought, ISO 32. Um, so hydraulic equipment is really susceptible to dirt and uh, contamination. So make sure everything is nice and clean before you go to fill. Wipe down the inlets, wipe down the cap from the jug you're gonna use. Make sure there's no dirt that's gonna fall down. Clean out your funnel as well. Everything's gotta be spotless for this to work properly. Otherwise you might have issues. And we're supposed to fill this to within half an inch of the top here of the fill hole. So it's about two and a half quarts, I believe, which is about half this jug. So I'll get pouring here and we'll see, see how we get along. Okay, we're full. Well, not full, half an inch from the top. All right, guys, things are getting fun here. We have to start running the power unit. So this is gonna be the bleeding procedure. So it's a 3 16 hex key to undo the bleeder screws on the back of these cylinders here. And uh, they want you to put Two of the tall blocks and one of the medium blocks stacked together underneath the flat portion ahead of where the bleed screw is on both the uh, ramps, sorry, the, the frames. So I've gone ahead and done that and I've hooked up our power unit. So the idea is um, raising and lowering the frames moves hydraulic fluid into the system, pushes air towards the bleeder screws and that's how we elevated those. We gotta have a couple rags handy because it's gonna be a mess. And um, yeah, so to begin, using the panic control, raise, then lower both frames about eight inches or so off the ground. Do not pass the first locking position. Do this three times. Then put uh, a rag under the bleeder screw you're gonna do first. Loosen the screw. When you hear air escaping, stop loosening the screw. Air and some hydraulic fluid will come out. When no more air is coming out, tighten the bleeder screw. Um, push up on the pendant for a couple seconds, then stop. This removes any remaining air towards the bleeder screw. Open it a small amount, press up for a couple seconds only, then stop again. Tighten the bleeder screw. And then we repeat on the other side. So let's try it. Okay. So up about eight inches. Don't panic if it doesn't move right away. The fluid's got to get through to the cylinders. Okay, so we're up eight inches. Now we're going to lower it. This is going to be slow until the air gets worked out of the system, that's for sure. Put a little pressure on. And raise. And 
and lower. And third time. Okay, let's see what happens. Definitely quite a bit of air coming out and some foamy looking fluid. Let's do the other side here. Okay. okay, so now we're at the step where we're supposed to run it up for two seconds, check if there's more air, run it up again for two more seconds and keep repeating that. Um, don't exceed eight inches. If you do, make sure you, you have them tight, drop it back down and start over and you keep repeating this until there's no more air. So I'll go ahead and do that. Two seconds. I definitely got more air out of that one. And this one. And you can tell how much when these things drop down to where the fluid is. That time I got mostly foam out of that guy. Foam out of this one too. A little bit of foam, but it's looking a lot more like liquid. Also, I would never get in the habit of putting my hands in this gap between the two frame halves. Always go from the top if you're going to do anything in these. You don't want your hand getting pinched. Okay, let's try it down. A lot more air there. I think there's going to be a lot of rinse and repeat for a while, guys. So I'll, I'll keep going here off camera until I get it off. Okay, guys, that concludes our assembly and setup of uh, the quick jacks. So I went ahead and tightened both um, of the bleeder screws. I checked every hose, make sure we had no leaks. And I did have to top up the uh, reservoir on the power unit. Uh, it was down about an inch, so I topped it back up to half an inch low. Um, I've taken the blocks out and laid these down on the ground. The next step in the instructions is to test operation. So uh, that means lifting a vehicle. You're not supposed to lift these without weight on them. So I, uh, I'm gonna have to move these aside, pull the uh, M5 in and we'll try a lift. Um, of note in the manual, it says the cylinders and stickers, the big stickers on the end of the unit should face the heavier end of the vehicle. So we're gonna make sure these are in this orientation in the garage when the car comes in. And also these lock bars have to be on the outside. And you're also supposed to test that these raise and lower freely and that these little uh, shoes on the end can move. 
freely, which I've done. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to go move this aside and bring the car in. Exciting. Okay, guys, we are all hooked up. I've got the power unit plugged into the uh, lines, which are going to each side. And I've got the uh, low profile blocks under the car. That's about all I could fit. And I hope it's going to work because they say not to lift the car from the ground up. They, uh, the frames have to have a little room to uh, lift before they'll carry any weight. So here's our setup. That's the uh, stock lifting location on the car up here. You can see it there, the plastic lifting spot, and that's the low profile puck. So I'm positioned at the rear and at the front on both sides. So just want to double check the other side and then I think we're ready to try it. Yeah. And one more. Okay, well, I'm nervous. You guys probably aren't, but let's try it out. Well, you know what they say, no guts, no glory. Cross your fingers. Oh boy. quickly check on our positioning here. Looks good. There's Worried a little bit because when they when they rise, they actually uh, fold up and ahead quite a ways. But during the first part of the rise, they go up fairly evenly before they flip upwards. So we're good. So let's go a little further. Okay, looks like we're, looks like we just passed the first stop. So now if we back up, see how that's locked in now? And we're locked in on this side too. So here's where we're looking at the first stop on the uh, quick jacks. So it looks like we're at a height of about 14 inches to the top of the frames. A little further to the rubber blocks, probably another inch. So maybe 15 inches up from the bottom of the car. And that's already looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to lift them back up, release the catches, and then drop it down as per the instructions for the test. Okay, so we'll go back up a little bit. And at this position, we should be able to trip these things. I'll go trip the other side. Okay, both are tripped. So now I'm gonna fully lower this thing. There we go. We're clear of the car. 
Okay, so now what I'd like to do is raise these up again. Sorry, all the way I guess you're supposed to do. Okay, we're locked in first position again. One more check for leaks. And everything looks good so far. I've got no leaks on any of the lines. I'm gonna go check on the jacks themselves and then we'll take it up all the way. Okay guys, everything looks okay, so I'm going for it. Okay, and we're locked in. It's probably gonna be hard to gauge from the camera, but oh, wow. This is, uh, this is something. We've got so much ground clearance under here. It's ridiculous compared to jack stands I'm talking. So we are now right about 20 inches or so, plus the extra inch from the, uh, or inch and a half from the lift block, sorry. So 21 and a half inches of clearance. And you could easily go under here with a creeper. This is, this is just fantastic. I'll give you a hint of our next project coming up. It involves those pipes there and a sawzall and some more racket and noise. So, wow. Very nice. I can't even begin to tell you how happy I am right now. Going from jack stands and down floor jacks to this is a game changer for probably most garage hobby guys. Um, I don't, uh, the reason I didn't go with another kind of lift is number one, well, it wasn't really price. If a good lift would have worked in here, price wouldn't have been a problem, but um, this lift's about two feet. And uh, if you look at the car, I don't have a lot of clearance above it. I've got, I've, I've got less than two feet of clearance above the car before I hit my garage door there. So even the scissor lift that I was looking at cost over twice as much as these. These are about two grand, but um, they lift up to 48 inches. So what would I gain? I would gain a foot, I guess, at over double the price. To me, that just didn't seem worth it. I'll just wait till I get a proper shop one day and put a two post in it. For now, this is this is just perfect. I can get I can get done anything I want to get done. So, next project is actually going to involve this car and and uh, the, some exhaust work underneath. So uh, that'll be a good challenge for for testing the clearance on this. So, yeah. Well, if you guys have ever had to lay under a car, hopefully not in the driveway, but I sure have. 
and uh, tried to get around under there and do any kind of wrench work that requires any sort of clearance for your elbows. You know you've been working like this with a wrench dropping stuff on your face. This is this is just this is just uh, I'm I'm so stoked to try this out. Um, I uh, I did not buy, get sponsored for this product. I bought it with my own money, so this is an unbiased opinion of the product. I just I've been looking at them for a long time. I guess what was stopping me is I was toying around with the idea in my head that I could put a proper lift in. I can afford one. Somehow I can make it fit, but the math just doesn't work out in this home garage. There's not enough clearance above to make it worth any kind of effort or any kind of uh, value to get a proper lift to get, you know, several feet off the ground only. So this is just, this is just the, uh, the happy medium. And uh, for the price point, it was around two grand Canadian with the uh, mounting brackets and the pinch point blocks. I I'd say I'm more than happy. It's, um, it's well worth the money when you consider it comes with a hydraulic power unit and a couple of cylinders and a bunch of nice lines and connectors and everything's included in the kit except for the fluid itself. So yeah, very well packaged unit from, uh, from Quick Jack, which is a subsidiary of Ben Pack. So reputable company backing them. So uh, I have no doubt I'm gonna have a lot of years of enjoyment out of these guys. So yeah, what do you think Zoe, approved? Approved? Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. And uh, we'll go ahead and tally up the scores, uh, but I will uh, see you guys on the next video. Ciao for now. All right, guys, our first qual our first category is product quality. And for this one, uh, I was thoroughly impressed. The, uh, the shipping alone, this, this unit was very well packaged from the factory for shipping. Uh, I had no issues with anything being damaged or, or possibly even could be damaged that I could see. Um, the unit itself is very well built. The, uh, the frames seem really robust. They're 81 and a half pounds per frame. They're, they're hefty. Um, everything was included in the package except for the hydraulic fluid or transmission fluid, but I'm sure that's due to some sort of shipping regulations. It'd be tough to ship that fluid. So I didn't mind that. And, and also the unit seems to be pre-tested at the factory. There was definitely evidence of fluid inside the cylinders and the power unit. So it's really good to see these were pre-tested at the factory before being shipped out. In terms of ease of use and features, uh, yeah, they're, they're a little heavy. You have to slide them under the vehicle. Um, so you also have to make sure you have three inches minimum uh, height uh, available under the vehicle to slide them under there. But, but other than that, um it'll lift the vehicle in about 30 seconds and you can stop at the first or second position if you just want to lift it slightly off the ground and uh the kit i bought comes complete with hangers to mount these which is great and um you can buy the hangers separately also performance uh these uh these frames lift 5,000 pounds in 30 seconds there's um it's going to do everything I need it to do. It's going to lift every vehicle I have in my driveway. So with ease, that should be great. In terms of value, they're cheaper than a 4,500 or a scissor dollar scissor lift I was looking at that lift 48 inches. Uh, it'll only lift half that, but less than half the price. And a good jack and stands will run you about 300 bucks. So that, I felt that was a pretty good deal, uh, especially if you don't need the extended length frames. If you can get away with just the uh, the regular TL model, the, uh, the regular model was about $300 less at the time I bought my kit. So they sometimes come up at Costco for a decent price. Uh, some of the local hardware stores around my area had that model as well. Um, but I, I needed the extended frame. But if you don't, that's a good way to save yourself an extra 300 bucks or so. All right, guys. That concludes our tool review of the QuickJax 5000 TLX. Uh, if you have any questions regarding this review or any comments, please do provide them down below in the comments section. Uh, I always look forward to reading those. Uh, if you have any feedback for the way we do reviews or anything like that, or you want something, you have something you'd like reviewed, please uh, feel free to post it down below. Now, as always, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you. And if you uh, like this review, please consider liking, subscribing, share it with a friend if you know somebody who is looking for one of these maybe. 
Have a great day, everybody.